Guys, Maya Rudolph's on the show today, who we love. Dana's munching. I I got to go to Hawaii with mm-hmm. Maya when her Maya. daughter Pearl was just squirted out. Literally, I cut the cord on the plane. And then we had fun there. And then I saw them. She and PTA were there during uh, Wrong Missy at the beginning. They were just there in Hawaii, so we mm-hmm. got to see them. But she's always, obviously, a super talent. And uh, now, I have a, now I have a story for you, Dana, before you talk. Um, I'm just thinking about the umbilical cord. Yeah. Because I cut the umbilical cord. Of her? No, of my own wife, dummy. Oh, and how'd it go? <laughs> well, they give you gloves that are the exact same color of the umbilical cord. So my two fingers are down there Stupid. and I've got scissors. And I, it's like three <laughs> umbilical cords. Three little hot dogs. Literally, so three umbilical cords. I'm like, <laughs> when I went, I didn't know if I was going to get it on my finger. Yeah, and then you get the bill. You go, hey, you didn't knock off anything for uh, my work. <laughs> so newsflash, how about bright red gloves for yeah. the guy cutting the umbilical cord so he can what, any What or color is an umbilical purple? cord? The audience wants to know. Oh, I don't know. We'll let Maya is it? answer. We, we talk about that. Oh, yeah. Podcast. We get into that. Also, I want to tell Dana that, you know, when you're on SNL, we didn't get to this with Maya, but, you know, Lauren sometimes we'll call you out of the blue. Now I'm lower on the totem pole than this guy. I was more of a journeyman. But this, but Lauren calls me out of the blue, maybe two, three years in. They go, Lauren's calling. I go, I'm back in LA. I go, yeah? Hello? Hello? And he goes, David, uh, Lauren. Yes, the, the girl told me. And then he goes, David, uh, Mick Jagger <laughs> is doing something for something. And uh, mm. he has to give like a little monologue speech. Do you think you'd have any... Um, ideas or I think you'd be someone that knows music you could throw in some stuff and I go uh, I don't know when's he doing it and uh what is it and then I hear hello he puts Mick on oh and I go oh hello oh, I need he goes, some hello. Jokes. yeah he goes oh I need some fucking rib ticklers <laughs> oh I need a pun or something don't, a nice joke for me <laughs> don't give me your fucking regular dog shit I seen in your act yeah. Give me the good stuff. <laughs> Top shelf. <laughs> so I sat there and tried to pitch some fucking bullshit. Don't hog the jokes for yourself. Give me to me or Mick Jagger. Maybe put a little wiggle wiggle in it. It fold. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I can wiggle wiggle. I go, oh, you should do the TikTok I got hips again, move and sway side to side. I I, I'm not doing I'm Mick Jagger at all. I mean, I I'm know, not we, even close to Mick Jagger. But uh, it was just to say that we were talking earlier about that, like, it's sort of interesting that, first of all, Lauren has all these big deal friends. And then when you get pulled into the mix, Fun. suddenly I'm on the phone. He just puts them on. You talk. And then mm. mix. Mix, almost nervous pitching me ideas. Because to anyone else, to a comedian, he doesn't really know what level I am. He just heard I was a writer. You know, He goes, this, he might write some good jokes. So he's kind of going, what about this? What about this? And I'm saying this. Anyway, he won't remember. So don't ask him because he'll deny it. But uh, <laughs> And because it didn't happen. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maya Rudolph is um, a. Uh, I was going to tell my. Oh Lord, yeah. Oh, Dana, hold for Keith Richards. Really? He's going to do the monologue. Oh, he's going to be so high Keith. I don't even know if I have any. That's all right, bro. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so that's my. And then Lauren. <laughs> then it got worse over the years. Hold for Hanson. You think we should go with Hold Umbop for or Bleak Grammar? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dana, it's Kelsey Grammar. <laughs> if you don't, if you can't do an impression, young people, just say the name of the person it's funny. you're doing. Hold for this Urkel. This is Mick Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Hold for Urkel. Hold for Urkel? Yeah. <laughs> Why, my name's Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> That's Urkel. <laughs> well, I'm Urkel. Oh, he's got uh, suspenders. Well, he has suspenders. <laughs> I'm the good shit. I am officially Urkel getting pop. punchy. I apologize yeah, to we've our been here listeners. For 14 you know. hours doing these. Anyway, yeah. Maya Rudolph, we love her. She and sings, uh, she dances, she does all these great characters. She's doing her show right now called Go. Loot. Loot. Two billboards on Sunset. And we get into that. Uh, Everyone Loves Maya is uh, a show that I'm going to pitch to her. All t- the women the I know in my life love Maya. She's she's like someone who you would if you sat, it's like someone if you sat down for lunch you would be like really really happy exactly that was Lauren talking about Maya Maya Amy she's just Tina a fun, that little squadron uh, is a is a is a hit so and she she will one thing I stood out for me is just talking about uh, doesn't have time for 
fools or or jerks or p- angry people oh, that's right that's wants right. to enjoy her work so anyway it's a very very cool interview we really enjoyed hanging out with her here she is Did you did you hear the lightning? Did you hear the lightning? What lightning? Oh, we had a lot of lightning with power outages, all kinds of stuff. Are you in LA? I'm in yeah, LA, dude. yeah. I'm in David's There's place. Lightning? lightning in LA, yeah. West Hollywood just poof, everything went out. What the hell? Yeah. This is where this you? goes out to the world. So my my address is if you'd like, it's at the corner of it's usually <laughs> unlocked. <laughs> Maya Rudolph is our guest today. <laughs> I'm in New York, Spady. What's going on there? Why do you have to be there? Well, I come here for I come here for the fun. You know, I come here for the fun. Well, you're never not working. So what would you be working? Nice on? one. I came to do uh, Fallon and. What do you do? That that's Fallon. That's uh, and I did it for Jimmy, and he loves it. <laughs> Uh, my my uh, Apple show Loot is coming out on Friday, so I'm promoting it this week. Oh, that's L O O T on Apple. You do a lot of shows. I like all your shows. You're with Fred. You're with friends. You're you know you're at camp. You're by the lake with all the ladies, and now you're who's in Loot with you? Yeah, Loot is she gets eighty two billion dollars. Eighty seven. Uh huh. Eighty seven billion dollars. Uh, and then she gets, she finds out she's in charge of a charity mm. that she wasn't quite aware of, a foundation. Mm-hmm. She Spades, just, Spades makes it seem like he was very good at his book reports. I'm watching. After, well, this is my book report struggling through in front of the class. Yes. Then you're married. Uh, I, I, these aren't spoilers, they're in the trailer. You, your husband <laughs> cheats on you and you get money, but you don't really know what to do with your life because yeah. you sort of live a, uh, you know. I like it. It's. It's the reverse Meg Markle story. Yeah. Is what it is. <laughs> I'm playing Meg Markle. <laughs> I, you, uh, yeah. So then she, she, you're trying to help the world and also help yourself. Spade, that was lovely. Thank you so much for sharing with the class. That was great. What did yeah. I get a B? You got an A for effort. <laughs> but I see loot billboards and I go, oh, there's Maya, of course. One million things she does because she just the most in-demand actress We're going to call America. you the busiest actress she, she in She really is. And you know why? Because she adds to everything. So if you throw her in, no matter what, the, the lead, any part, she scores. And uh, it's just more about her picking and deciding. She seems to be very good at whatever she does. I'm just going to observe that. You can disagree, uh, but... I seems agree, to be, Dana. You seem to be excellent. No, I, Dana, I, I just want to hear... You, uh, that's really nice to hear you say. I know Spade loves me, but Dana, you already know I love you, so it's very of exciting course. to hear you say that. Every interaction I've had with you has been positive over Same. the years at SNL, at Largo. You're just, you're just cool. I don't know. But you know what? You actually, I know it sounds like kind of trivial, but that's actually a very big element for me is like, if it's not positive, I'm not interested yes i think even yes during the great reset and after the pandemic i'm not into negativity i just want positivity i think I it's a cultural before shift. that like i noticed that i was the dork that like when people would say like who's your favorite host on snl like who's your favorite i would always say like i was such a sucker i was like well so-and-so was really nice you mm-hmm. know like if someone was really nice mm-hmm. i'd like them like I didn't, yeah. didn't care really if they were funny, but like <laughs> they were difficult or, you know, if they were like a kind person, I was like, you know what? They were really great. I, I really enjoyed that. I think I hosted, I think it was Jimmy's f- fourth show. Did you come in with Jimmy Fallon or you were early? I but came you in were after fa- Jimmy. You hosted once when I was there though. Yeah. And I remember hanging out with you in the bleachers in 8H and you just turned to me and you said, you're nice. You're really, you're really nice. You know, you like you're kind of, yeah, <laughs> something like that. See, I guess I told to your, you, I, it's like a, it's a real comedy turn on for me. I really like it. I don't like when people are mean or snarky. It's not, um, it's not enjoyable for me. It makes my butthole tight in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have the same When experience. you do uh, work as much <laughs> as we all do different things, 
you, I think we've all been in a situation where you're on a show or you're somewhere where you're kind of stuck, like a movie or a show, and you know it's going to yeah. be days and, days. and you realize, because you never meet anyone really until maybe a read through or on the set. And if you get a weird vibe, you're like, oh my God, is this, this shit going to be like this the whole time? I'll be on eggshells. Yeah. So you try to work with people. And people go, why do you do movies with people you know? Or it, It's just such a simple answer because you know what you're getting. You know they're already cool or you wouldn't do it again. And I also feel like I'm not as funny on my own because I'm I'm sketch lady. I'm not a stand up. So I mm-hmm. prefer um, a team sport. And I like I feel funnier when I'm with people that make me laugh. So I, I, I feed off of that energy. So I need to be like genuinely enjoying myself or it's a real downer for me. I don't. I totally agree. Yeah. I to, I, I'm completely with you. And I feel like I was a sketch player organically, but I became a stand up. There wasn't any improv troops in San Francisco at the time that I would join, but with David or you or anyone, yeah, it gets you going. And I, uh, I think that joyfulness maybe is underrated and, you know, there's certain camps that like if it's frustrating or people are angry, it's going to be a better project. But I just think joy wins. Yeah, I don't want to be like, you know, Mickey Rourke and uh, what's her name? (laughs) Nine making, and a half weeks, making nine and a half weeks. Like, did Carrie he, Otis or somebody? Didn't he, or Kim no, Basinger? didn't he like eat a raw onion before he kissed Kim Basinger? Like me, like that's, I heard crazy. That's stuff. my trick. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you. That's how you lure him in. in I life, share yeah. a raw onion with my wife after lovey dovey <laughs> time, and that's just a picadillo that we have. What um, about Maya? Have you ever been in the situation where? Well, you're two things. You're from I think Groundlings and. When you're from that collaborative fun and you get to SNL, I think people we've talked to, because Dana and I are dopey stand-ups, but it's less of a harsh transition than it was for us because yeah, yeah. it doesn't mean we're not collaborative. It just, that's not what we're doing every second. Absolutely. And, and you guys get there and it's a little smoother. Well, it's a then, little mini SNL, right? Yeah, In a way. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you bring your sketches fully formed to the show. I, I assume in the early days of the show yeah i mean i tried to bring groundling sketches there early on and i and uh that that um led with a resounding thud and at the table <laughs> but, but i but what i learned is that like you know it, it 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 it's you have to write for the room so like once i learned how to take those pieces like if there was a character that i really liked or mm. or a premise that i really liked and make them work for that room because every room is different so um, Are you saying work. the read through room or eight H? I guess. I guess both. both. <laughs> yeah, you're, but you're making a good point that I hadn't thought about. Well, you have to get past that read through yeah. room, which is pretty like, wicked. I never wrote to like you know just write for the table so that I'd get it in. Like I guess it was for both, mm-hmm. but like you have to be laughing at the table or else it doesn't. Yeah, work. you try to write for people at home, but that's not the politics of it. And that is the first time someone said Dana had a good point. By the way, just well, on the side. That note. was very, very nice of you. Uh, I, I think also, which we've talked about, but it's very interesting to me, is that you don't want to be too theatrical in the read through room. It can come off like a turnoff or kind of sweaty, but sometimes you have to get up and sing a song or move around right. to show the room. But everyone's from Harvard and Yale, kind of. <laughs> Everyone is like super smart and they can see you're pushing too hard. There's a whole energy to that. Yeah. And then 8H is its own monster uh, or beautiful place, depending on how, how you're doing. Wait, you know, Maya, do you so, think... Go ahead. You go, Maya. Wait, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Mine was more of a large uh, question. I but. like big, big questions. People <laughs> like when we don't let the guests talk. Um, when I, I, my question was, if you're, if you have a groundling sketch and people are aware of it, is there sort of a stink on it where they're against it a little bit when you bring it in? Or do you just like, when they brought in, there's sketches that were read when I was there where I didn't know. And it, and it gets, it's almost gets a more of a fair shot if they don't know anything. I would say probably, I think it depends. I mean, I'm trying to unlock my, my memory yeah. capabilities of 20 fucking years ago so I'm like, i don't <laughs> i don't know 70 I, for me and dana <laughs> that's the most exactly. honest answer we've ever had on the podcast <laughs> that was the thing well, i was say, i was just gonna say just in general is like uh, just a an excited um 
acknowledgement of like, it's, you know, I mean, I've talked to you guys about SNL before. It's kind of all I ever want to talk about with people that know it well. I find it most continuously fascinating topic, Mm -hmm. but it's so interesting to me to talk to other people that were there at a different time because Mm -hmm. We're 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 of the same fraternity, sorority, college, university, whatever it is for everybody, but we were there at different times. So we were there in different eras. So like Dana, I, I might have told you this, but I think I found one of your sketches in my old desk in my office. Wow. Like and I think it was on oh. a yellow legal pad. I'm not kidding. That would be normal. Yeah, yeah, but I wonder how you got a hold of it. Or unless I cleared out, maybe you you were in my I office. Got an, I got an old desk that I. Oh, could okay, have, and it was in there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh man. And I think I saved it. I'm saving it for like Sotheby's or something. That's interesting. Oh, it's so oh. interesting. I mean, the history is so interesting to me because it was such a like exciting place to get to and then once i got there all the people that i loved already had like touched it so it was so exciting and like Mm -hmm. i mean when i got there we were all using those um they were still using mac se 30s you know those Mm -hmm. like i think it's like like the computer computer? people were college but like that was when we had a server but like you weren't using a server when you were there Oh, no, it was all pencil and paper, and then you'd hand it in, someone else would type it. We had it. those Mad Men girls, there was four <laughs> girls in the room, <laughs> honestly just typing, and you'd put your sketch in the pile, and they'd write their name on the top so you know who typed it, and you go to Claire and say, Claire, did you do this? Can you even understand my writing? And they sort of understood everyone's, the way they wrote, and I, I'd have to hand my sketch in, Dana, like, let's say you write till two or three, whatever, on Tuesday night. Two I'd or hand, three. I know. I was a puss. I'd hand it in. This is why you I was going to go fire. all night. Two or three. <laughs> I was. I left at eight a.m. Even when I had a baby. <laughs> oh well, you won that one. But it became I got a badge fired. of honor. You stay late. Yeah. Well, two I, or three. It's crazy. Listen, let's not focus on the fact that I'm a colossal <laughs> pussy. I handed my sketch in, and then I took a cab to the Upper West Side to go home and sleep four hours. And then I'd come back in, or especially if I didn't finish my sketch, I'd come back in and hand it in, or I'd come and they go, can you tweak this? And I'd come all the way back and then go all the way home and then come back for a read through. That killed me. That was Should tight. I, yeah, that was typing. Or was, So mm-hmm. I'd hand it in freehand and they wouldn't understand it. They'd have to be able to call me in the middle of the wow. night and go, can you explain <laughs> what this arrow means? And uh, they go, this sketch is garbage. Do you want us to finish it? That was most of the calls. <laughs> We're halfway <laughs> through it. It looks like it's got, a, it kind of reeks already. But you know, Maya, when you say that about what you found, I had an old red binder. I don't know if Dana, you might have that. It's hard red binder. And it said SNL in the front, like in a circle. And then you'd put your your script in it if you wanted. And the director had mm-hmm. one and we, uh, the cast barely ever used it. But I got home and found that when I moved recently and I found an old rundown. You get the rundown after dress and the rundown for air and it says cold open this, this, this and the times next to it or whatever. And bye-bye was on, it was the Helen Hunt show. And so I saw all that and it was all these memories. Each sketch you look, even if it was a dress one, you go, oh, that one got cut. Oh, that one's good. Oh, that got moved up on air. I remember very like a wash of memories hitting you like, oh my God, like right there. I love it. So Maya, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Were you of the ilk of very meticulously organized with your binder and your office, or were you more toward mm. bare, controlled chaos? Some were very neat and some were just like wild. <laughs> I I never had a binder. I guess I was like the last generation. I was like the beginning of that like computer generation, but yeah. like yeah. still innocent. Like we didn't have social media. I think there were probably mm-hmm. like no. forums, so people would write weird shit about us. But other than mm-hmm. that, like or fan mail, yeah. yeah, fan mail from jail. Got a lot of fan mail from jail. Yeah, um, that was the only fan mail I got. And it was like, <laughs> "You and Sherry O'Terry are hot." Yeah. <laughs> well, that's scary. <laughs> David got that a lot too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, or like, is guy. Sherry O'Terry nice? <laughs> I got a lot of those. <laughs> a lot of those. <laughs> but I uh I was I've never been an organized person, but I'm not I'm not like a like a slob. I'm not slovenly, mm-hmm. but I'm not You know what? I would say that I'm probably being overly critical and to an outsider I probably look organized, especially you do. <laughs> like the like the the 
Emily Spivey and I shared an office for the majority of the time that I was there. So that was like a pretty mm-hmm. consistent office partner. I had other partners, mm-hmm. but I, um, but she and I had a, an office together for the majority of time. And like, we put posters on the wall and like, she had That's her deck. Nice. I had mine. Yeah. We, we like salvaged posters. a couch that wasn't covered in like the semen from the seventies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So, and the 80s. And the 80s. I said the 80s. But, um, I, had, I can safely say I had no action in my office for the solid six oh, years. Oh, God, no. Nothing. I, that's sh- I'm from, no. The, I'm from a, a fairly sober generation, too. Like, that's the other thing yeah. that's funny. Like, mm-hmm. And I'm sure people, who knows people, what people were doing. I mean, I'm such, a, I'm such a grandma. But at a certain point, I was even pregnant when I was there. So, like, I, you know, I was, I feel like in general, other than people going out to drink, like, I was a pretty, like, I feel like my, the majority of people I worked with, especially the, the girls that I worked with, the mm-hmm. women that I worked with were like good students. You had a lot of mm-hmm. strong women. Um, yeah, like I, mean, I just feel like we were, everyone was always like in a tither about us, but I just think like we were all kind of similar in our upbringing and like we were like good daughters, good students, like. Earnest. Yeah, and like we all like yes. came from yeah. sketch, so we knew how to work with other people, you know, cause I, I'd, I'd heard other rumors that like, it was scary and like competitive. Yeah. And I just, I don't work that way. And I also don't work mm-hmm. well that way. Like I would just, if, if it had been that way for me, like if I'd been there at a different time, I would not have, I don't think I would have survived. Mm-hmm. So who did you, I mean, it seemed like the, the pivot to like when Tina Fey and then there was you and then I don't know what order. And then there was Amy of course, mm-hmm. and before that, Anna Gasta. There were so many strong, uh, funny women. I don't. It just seemed to accelerate in terms Christine. of numbers. When I yeah. got there, that was well, the it, it was already accelerated because when I got there, Molly and Sherry and Anna were still Ooh. in the cast. Crush. Yeah. So it was yeah. already. It was already Crush City. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. that hard or so many women? Because sometimes, like, I think when I was there, it was a little less women in Dana, and that was a big problem. Like. We need more women. We need more women for the parts. But the women that were there got lots of parts. They were thrown in everything. I mean, I think that I learned the hard way that like, because we were all writing, you know, that like yeah. you have to write your own stuff. So it wasn't hard if your stuff was strong and you got it on. But to me, it was more like, I mean, I look at the show now and I'm like, you have like 20, 21 white guys. Like, yeah, yeah. how can anybody be on the show and get any airtime ever? There should be more. Uh, we've so talked crazy. to some people that have been there quite a while, and there's still a log jam. Well, up now top, it's, it's not you know? just that; it's a huge cast, and then it's also like four, four pre tapes a week. Which I mean, <laughs> I would. God I'd damn! Be dead. I'd be dead. Yeah, they do a lot of yeah. More you're like pre-tapes. you drive out to Long Island at four in the morning. You're like, wait, this is a show week. I can't do anything else. I can't. I can't even function. And then it takes you away from writing or something. Yeah. One time, uh, oh, forget it. <laughs> I had a sob story. I remember <laughs> oh, one I time. Can't wait. <laughs> no, I, I was doing. I was doing Coneheads applause, and um, Coneheads was sort of jury duty for all of us because. Lauren said it was, uh, you know, Paramount, everyone was in it and we all had a part. And then I had to do a pickup. So I had to do a pickup during a John Goodman show and they go, you fly out to LA, you go to Disney ranch. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You fly out in a red eye, you wake up, you shoot at Disney ranch all day and then you're going to miss Friday or Thursday or somewhere. You come in for the show, you know? Okay. And I'm so light in the show. Fine. So I fly I fly on the on the uh, red eye. Letterman is in first class. This is another side story. And he goes, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know Letterman. I've only done the show once. So I'm s- totally in awe. And they go to me, uh, the stewardess goes, should I wake you for honey buns? And I go, no, no, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and honey then, buns? Yeah, I honey guess. Honey buns? First, first what class, this? wake up. I'm more confounded by the honey buns. Yeah. So then Letterman gets up there taxing. He gets up to go to the bathroom at the last second and he stops and puts his hand on my leg and goes, should I wake you for honey buns? <laughs> and uh, honey uh, buns, what airline was I this? I know, American. And so American. then we go there <laughs> and I land. I can't sleep. I get up, we drive to Disney Ranch. They grease my hair back. I do a couple of crusher scenes, whatever, killing. These are other people's words. You destroyed. And, uh, face and then I get all the way back home to my dog shit apartment. And this is, you know, obviously like, 
five or six. I order a Domino's on the way. I land, I take one bit bite and shoemaker calls. And he goes, hey, uh, Lauren wants you back. And I go, uh, well, I'm, well, he doesn't, but also I'm coming tomorrow. I just finished shooting. He goes, he wants you back. You, you got a car out front. You got to come back. I go, you're out of your fucking mind. Wait, I got to go now. Back to Disney Ranch? Back to New York. Oh, oh back to New York. I go, I just got home. I got to go to bed and I got to get up and then fly back. Can, can I ask Maya a question? About, oh, sorry. Finish your thought, Dave. Jesus. Finish your thought. What? I got, I got ADD. What? Is Maya the guest or am I? I I'm just curious when um, <laughs> jumping around here, because you had this huge Kamala Harris yeah. thing you did that I think you, did you win an Emmy? Or, I don't know. You have a lot of awards. You have two <laughs> Emmys. And nominations and I things. I only won Emmys during quarantine, so it feels like it like during COVID. So it feels like it, it feels you like just, a fever dream. It seems like you won a lot. Are you of counting stuff, those? Yeah, the last five? So I you won, won four, for Kamala Harris. Okay, I won you, four <laughs> Emmys during during uh, lockdown. During co- during four lockdown. Emmys, four Emmys during lockdown. And, Sorry, two and, during lockdown, two the fall. Now, the f- what two, the <laughs> fuck? You have COVID four? Was, pandemics. And awards just kind of are married got, when it comes to Maya. I got really Maya. hot during the pandemic. Now, Luckily, we know you awards have a mean nothing family to me. and you're busy. How are you? I was just at David's thing. How are you flying back and forth? Because at one point, Lauren called me before the start of that political season, just out of the blue, like on a Thursday. We need you like yesterday. You, you'll do Biden um, and I hadn't even tried to do Biden. I hadn't even thought of doing Biden. I had to do something else, so I didn't do it. And then Jim Carrey did his first, he was the first one to kind of do it for that season, right? It was Jim Carrey. Yeah. But then it's just for travel first, besides the creative part of it. Were you just going back and forth or were you able to stay in New York? I was and- going back and forth for the most part. The week of the election, I stayed in yeah. New York, but I was going back and forth every, every weekend. Yeah. When would you come in for Friday and Saturday or the whole week? I would come in for like Thursday or Friday. Yeah. And that was pretty, pretty early. That was pretty early days of um, COVID and like, you know, I I was, I was very scared. So, and I was also like scared about my kids and I wasn't vaccinated yet. And we didn't even know if they would get Mm back. My kids would get vaccinated anytime soon. So um, I was pretty, pretty uh, nervous nelly about the whole thing sure. and um they were and it was really actually quite comforting to be in 30 rock because i think like anything i mean i experienced this having a baby and then coming back to work which was like anything familiar even if it's hard mm-hmm. it's more comforting so like being in that building especially when there was a global pandemic weirdly felt comforting because it was yeah. familiar i knew where to go feels I, normal it felt normal yeah and so but that be, I say that to say like those first shows were pretty gnarly in terms of um, like cue cards were on um, third the third floor. So we weren't really seeing changes sometimes. I think one of the first shows, we didn't see the changes until we were on air. And that, was, that, was, <laughs> that, that was always blows people's And that was tough. That was it is tough. weird. And, but but it was, exp- you know, like, again, to me, that like weird you know, like rush that I get yeah. from that place that that is familiar was okay. And I knew it would be okay. Whereas like, I assumed somebody like Jim was like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Like what's going on? This isn't, this is madness. Do you find that Lauren, uh, cause I was just thinking about his personality and he is with his droll sense of humor. He is, he's, he never gets, you know, thrown out I've, I've only seen him just yeah. very calm and i don't know what he said when you first came back but he must have said something pithy to relax you and you you, you do kamala and you know mm-hmm. i don't know it's just that that vibe is kind of comforting that's it is a big comforting. part of his also his can i just say for the record that you you have the best lorn i've ever heard whoa um i i think this is very nice <laughs> sorry <laughs> i put you on the spot now but i like, can't do but it like if i'm if i'm like old and like, or if I'm like in a bed, Dana, will you come, will you come talk to me like Lauren? I would talk to you like Lauren. It's that thing, my, you know, you're like really loved and it's, it's, it's sort of, it's like a victory lap. <sighs> my I have heart, Lauren. My heartbeat just got like uh, calmer and I feel down. warm everywhere. 
Oh, well, that's nice. I mean, I, I started doing it when I got there after about four months, and I didn't know anyone else was doing it, but it was really, uh, which I've said before, in the Wednesday meeting, picking the sketches. You know, some sketches are off to the side. There's a big bulletin board, and he would say, that was my first in, oh, I still have no fucking first act. <laughs> and then he would go in his private bathroom and come back out. <laughs> And he'd say, Whitney's piece, uh, the pig and the goat, anybody? Uh, I don't know, Lauren. <laughs> anybody and, I liked. And then Lauren know. would go, I, I, I thought it was breathtaking. Oh, and then put so it good. Breathtaking. Uh, I know, we great. love him. He's very popular on our show. He gets shinier and brighter as you get away from the show and, you, mm-hmm. and you're kind of more aware of what he's having to balance. Who the character of Kamala Harris and didn't you sometimes have a cup with a straw in it? There was a casual kind of, there, there was, was some kind of character you a, made from Kamala. There was and a, how, uh, I think it was like a, like a Mai Tai or a daiquiri or so you just lot of type drink. Played her as this character uh, that was based on Kamala, which was sort of, you, it was incredibly potent what you were doing. This super confident or how did you come up I, with that? You know, I, I, first of all, I just want to say for the record that I just met her for in person for the first time ever. And I don't know if you experienced this playing um, political uh, per- people and then on you the show, meet them. but like yeah. but they would, you know, during the elections, everyone would come through the building. So you would get to cross paths with sometimes with the people that you were playing, but yeah. I never, I never got to do that. And then I just thought like, well, I'll never meet her. It's COVID. And yeah. I did just get to meet her. And then weirdly, like at a dinner, then someone was asking like, how do you play her? And I had to like say it in front of her. Oh. It was humiliating. Oh. Although I realized I was saying to her, you know, I'm not an impressionist. I've never been an impressionist. Like I, I think I do impressions of people, but I, I think the reason why her impression is that way is because Kamala is like, um, she's, she's i i'm fascinated by her like again back to that thing that we were talking about dana like i f- found the joy in playing her in like the same way mm-hmm. i think kids like dress up as like princesses or like play like so you know yeah. um like like luke skywalker you know mm-hmm. i know my references are dated but you get it like no mm-hmm. but i i get this the sense of fun i mean when you yeah. when i was watched you watch do kamala it's just like maya's having so much fun and it's joyful and so it's hard it's you just want to look at it you want more of it <laughs> it's like, yeah it's joyful and i and i actually said that to her like i yeah. i find her to be joyful like she's a big smiler yeah. she yeah. she feels like she's got a lot of joy in her she's laughing at things and then when mm-hmm. she has to be serious tough stern mm-hmm. anything she is and like it's it's powerful she's so powerful and mm-hmm. it's really exciting so like all the th- things that draw me to her were just like the things that I was probably in the back of my mind trying to emulate when you see someone that's like exciting to your fascinating. That's why like Beyonce is so fun. Cause like, I want to be Beyonce. I want to play yeah. dress up. Mm-hmm. Like I want to be her, you know, her stage persona, Not, you know? Yeah. But, isn't like, it fun really, to play confident characters? Huh? Is it fun? Co- fun to play confident characters. Yeah. It's like your Long Island ladies with amy like those two are so crazy funny well that one uh, is jody mancuso who runs our hair department at snl like that that we are we're both oh you're playing, doing her yeah we're both yeah. playing jody um and that's and that's the fun that's like the fun game of it is like mm-hmm. we're imitating jody to, for jody and she loves yeah. it so then we just keep going. Also, for- also you're playing Kamala and, and some of these characters are not mean impressions. So you're not, it's more fun when you see the people because sometimes impressions have a, a slight mean streak just for the funny factor. And you don't realize when you see the person, oh, I do exaggerate this or that. And that might not. Yeah. I mean, well. look, if they, if I, if, I ended up having to play like Trump or something like there's no way I'd find any joy. I, I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure I would do just fine roasting that mofo. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to do a lot of things. Excuse me. We're doing a lot of good stuff. Let me tell you, <laughs> we're going to be, you're going to see a lot of stuff. You're going to be very happy. I can tell you that stuff, we had is, James- stuff might be the, the <laughs> word he uses the most. Like if you were to tell yeah. me that we were ever going to have someone in a position of power using and whose favorite word was stuff, I'd be scared <laughs> and so bummed. I'd be we're, do, we're doing a lot of things. Lot yeah, of yeah. things. Really? Or any any time you want to tell me what those things no, are? No, it's just, just very. Dane is very general. I don't. I try to find a hook in it. I. It, it's yeah, it's, so it's like funny. A, a song to me, and I then I don't really harbor in uh, teaching or making political points. But you could just do stuff and let the audience decide. But Trump's a funny rhythm. Biden is also very interesting now that he's gotten more animated and he's louder um, because he was very whispery. And so James that's on SNL right now is doing both of them beautifully. Uh, He's he's unreal. He's incredible. Oh, yeah. 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 We did talk to him. We had him on the podcast. And he is unbelievable. And it's like anything like the minute you see someone do the impression, you're like, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. That's the most jealous hit when you go, oh my God, that's an easy hook. But I feel like now we can all tap into it and we can do it because we heard him do it correctly. You're like, right, that's what it is. It was cool too because I remember during the pandemic, early days, early stages of the pandemic, Amy Poehler, I think, was really into his TikTok and was sending him to me Mm. and our friends and saying like, this guy's- I was too. I sent to my friends. He was walking down the street. Exactly. and And I go, it's so hard to riff- he would talk about anything, and I go, it's very hard without a script, because a script, you you write in your hooks. You make sure you say certain things. Cause, but when someone just asks you a question, and you have to riff, you can't always find your way he, back to the funny he, parts, you know? He has the language of Trump in that when yeah. we, we did a live thing with James, and then we had the audience just suggest any movie or TV show, you know, and he would just go with it. Mm, whatever yeah. it was what as trump in the language of trump he would so yeah, yeah he would do he, trump like saying why it affected china and so whatever you asked him he would get it all the way back to that's why china's the bad guys and it was so <laughs> it was so funny and then oh you my go God. it was just a q a yeah. and p- hey is that the hat i bought you this i didn't even think of that i swear to god i go i just oh, put I thought you were doing it to see if i would no. notice it really and i didn't mean to interrupt while you were talking about kamala <laughs> but the sun was the light was in my eye and i grabbed my hat and i go I thought, wait a second. <laughs> Didn't you wait give, a did, minute? That was a little, you that gave, was a sweet little, sweet little grownups wrap gift. That's what it was. I go, you gave it to all, was it grownups? I only man. bought you one gift once. Don't make people think I've. Oh my gifts. God. You know, I get a <laughs> gift probably every week from Maya and, um, that that was That's just one so of them. nice grownups. Oh it's my the, God. We're, it's the we're, least I can do Dana. It, it was literally the least she could <laughs> David do. David needs Gro- a friend. Yeah. Grown Conan ups. needs a friend and David needs a friend. Go ahead, David. Maya and I are friends. And we were on Grown Ups, which is keeping the lights on at TBS. Uh, it's on every day, Grown Ups 1 and 2. Yeah. And uh, I had so much fun. I don't even realize it till afterwards. And then people see it and they go, was that fun? I go, yeah, it was. Even though some reviews were like, at least they had fun. <laughs> I mean, mo- I feel like my memories of making that movie. Well, the first movie I was pregnant. So yeah. um, that was more like just keeping myself intact. But yeah, I feel like we did a lot of eating together. You're a very good eating buddy. <laughs> I'm a very good eater. Also, you were yeah. always fun in the show. So if you're walking on the set and you see Maya, you have to just walk over because she has something to say about anything. It's just fun to talk to. And then the next one, you're great. And then I ran into you in Hawaii when I was doing the wrong Missy. Oh and yeah! Oh, the, the good old good old tiptoes. I told Dana uh, that there's yeah, a tiptoes, but David I can't remember how it started. Nickname. Well, my kids call him a tiptoes because they tried <laughs> to tell him a joke, <laughs> and he couldn't figure it out. Yeah, and the and the joke goes like this, Dana: What what um, begins with a begins with T and ends with T? And I said tiptoes. And he said, a tiptoes? And they were like, a teapot. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. What? By the That's way, not- they laughed so hard at my answer because it was so fucking horrible. And then they then they liked me after that because they liked because I was stupid. Aw. Yeah. He's, yeah. Not, he's, not uh, so, he's not so bright, that little spin. Yeah. yeah but he's, a, he's like a, a kind of a fake uncle, you know, and yeah, the kids love fun- him. He's a funkle. When I he's walked away, I heard one of them go, Mommy, go. why is he famous? And you couldn't answer. 
And I was like, huh. <laughs> you know, that's a good question. I don't know. Keep your frosted mini wheat, son. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, what's the ba- what's the questions you've been asked the most when you go on podcasts oh, yeah, what's or a good talk one? shows? <laughs> you don't have to answer your question. What does question. David Spade smell like? Is yeah. Number one. Uh, honey. I haven't done um, a lot of podcasts, P.S. Yeah, you're a babe because I'm only like I'm very selective and we're very flattered you're on this one. Well, okay, I mean, I'll do again, one. And like I you guys are a people I um know, like and adore and worship. Don't My phone's that. ringing. Should I answer it? I think it's kind of hip if you do. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's see <laughs> who it is. Yeah, cuz it sounds Did like it a murder already? mystery or something. That's a hotel no, phone. I think, I think it's like can we clean No, it's it? probably it's commit Kamala Hello, Harris. This is Maya. Oh. Hi, Go this is Kamala Maya. Harris. And uh-huh. Maya is on the phone right now. She's in. We, uh, I don't know who that is. The call is coming from inside the hotel. She says, I don't know who that is. Right. Now she's, she's walking. She's terrified. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was Kamala Harris, guys. What is she doing? I knew it. She was here to hang out, you know. Um, I learned it's Kamala, by the way. <laughs> so if you do meet her, you have to you have you have to pr- pronounce that you put the emphasis on the first A, or else I don't know. Kamala, what happened almost to you. like Pamela, but almost with the like K. Pa- Pamela, you that, well, that, that yeah. fruit we all pretend exists. Can I? There's two questions I'd like to get to. One yeah, is because I'm just curious. When did little Maya first have the dream of being a comedian, i.e. sketch player, because I know you have a huge musical background, Mm -hmm. but when did that first hit you like, I'm funny and maybe I could be on TV? I think I fantasized about it very, very, very young. Like seven, six, seven, eight years of age? maybe even, yeah, yeah. Do you you see it in any of your your kids? Do you see the bug in any of your kids? I do, yeah, and I'm sure in the same way that I had it because... You know, my parents being musicians, they were on the mm-hmm. road, so they were live performers. And then there was like a great moment when, as an older person, I I discovered a, a home movie from like some time we were on the road with my parents, me and my brother. And mm-hmm. um, one of the Smothers brothers was teaching my brother how to yo-yo. Oh, Tommy. Yeah. Yo-yo it was brothers. Like, wow. It was like uh, my mom was playing with the Smothers Brothers. Like that was the combo, and which is like, wow. oh, of course that makes sense. That's like music and comedy totally mm-hmm. go together. Yeah. yeah. And I was little and impressionable. And that that was normal to me. Mm-hmm. To be, and yeah. um, so I think in that same way that like that bug definitely um, gets in there and rubs off a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then when did you first uh, attempt it? Was it grade school, high school, like all school, all, like, all through all school, the time, theater, like just okay, full, clown? Full hand so you're going the full whole time. Hambone. <laughs> full hand bone. Always wanted to be, but I, you know, I think it it took until fairly recently that I realized, like, like I was always like I'm an actor, but I'm actually really I'm a performer. I mm. think I'm more of a I I think that my true essence is a live performer i i can act i can perform but like i'm much better live i'm much better on a stage i'm much happier i feel like it just is more natural to me that way i feel like i have a problem well with film and and uh, those kinds of things that can that you're fighting against you know we got to do it again and we're taking a break and the sun's coming up and if it's live and the lights are on then it's just go 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 so you can get lost more easily yeah and that's where you want about like this angle seeing this mold Mm -hmm. and this side of my nose and like you want (laughs) to pretend that you're not noticing there's a camera right there but there's a camera right there. And then it's like the sixth time you've done it. So it's like saying, you know, it's like saying donut 20 times, but yeah. the time, time it sounds It's not weird. even, yeah, I, or 125 times. Dana, yeah. I read about these directors that are great, but, <clears throat> and there's a lot of them that, this sounds so crazy, but, you know, <laughs> I, I get that you have to do some takes, but you read about these people that do 20, 30, 50, and you, and in comedy, I, I guess in some instances, I just don't agree with it just on my performing way because I want it to matter every time. And I maybe I'm just not good enough to where you give it a thousand percent every time. I've been on sets where you know the first ten, they're not. There's no chance they're going to use them, no matter how good you do. There's just yeah. a thing where they're going to go. I have a thing about we're going to go forever. And I worked with a guy once where they go, "You want to go again?" And he goes, "Yep." 
before anyone could say anything, he'd go, yep. And one time I pulled him aside and I said, hey man, what's going on? And he, and he goes, oh, if they ever ask me, I'm never going to say no. And I go, well, you got to, <laughs> he goes, I, I just want another chance at it. I go, but that's a decision between you and the director. Like the director is ultimately going to pick. So you, you have no say in it. You're just going to go and go and go and go and go. I would say for me personally, like Larry Sanders, yeah. the great, late great. Gary Shanling, and then Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like I've talked to Jeff Garland about it and he says, well, sometimes you don't know you're doing a take, you know? You don't even it's know great. you're doing a take. You're just talking. So you could tell sometimes Richard Lewis and Larry David are not really acting anymore. They're just riffing and the camera's rolling and they're sort of breaking. Yeah. So I do think with comedians and performers, the directorial style should sort of try to yeah. take advantage of that. Comedy. If you're Daniel Day that's, Lewis and that's you're, wonderful you're, because that yeah. is there is an essence there that is not, you know, it's just far more contrived when you're trying to make it seem natural. And that's so smart. Larry, well, Larry's a smart guy, and yeah. and and so is Gary. Discovering it when the camera's rolling, as opposed to discovering it before. Like Eastwood doesn't rehearse much; they kind of talk and let's get you over there, Woody Allen. And I think just trying to preserve that with it with a certain kind of performer, where it's just you're discovering it right as the, you're. Oh, now I got it, and the camera's rolling, as opposed to I got it. Now let's go over there and shoot it again. Right. Tricky. That's why movies always sabotaged me except wayne's world what we had a lot of control mike and i with in the shooting was very simple oh. and there was a lot of so that yes, one worked, i just the rest rewatched of it for the three millionth time with my you children. did oh. oh yeah of course i did i mean dana you're you're beautiful you're just beautiful like everything Jeez, about getting chills. you it's it's like watching jordan just play basketball. It's ju it's a joke how fantastic you are. Oh, uh, God, I think I love you, but you're yeah. we're both married. Um, the, I would say this about that particular movie. I look at Garth and want to be Garth. Right. It shows. I want to be. I want to be him. He's so loyal. He's so positive. He worries about his friend. So, yeah, yeah I'm like he's and he's in the moment. He's playful. So, yeah, I want to be Garth, too. I get, and it, I get but it. I feel like you can you can if you really had to think about why we love Garth so, so much, I think it's like you can kind of feel that, you know. And mm -hmm. there's something like it's the same way that I felt about Saturday Night Live when I was a kid. My parents would watch it and I would watch them watching it. And they were the age the people were on the show. And I was like, ooh, that looks fun. It looks like they're having fun with their friends. Mm -hmm. And there was something about it that I was attracted to. Like, I didn't know exactly what it was, but it looked fun. And my parents were fun. Like, I wasn't scared of my parents. They were like young, cool people. So something about it felt familiar and it felt like yeah that's yeah. where cool people Fr are and like friends having fun yeah. is so seductive yeah. and and i've mentioned this recently but david crosby one of the people from the 60s who saw the beatles fresh and he just says these were guys having so much fun and projecting so much joy and and dudes hanging out that you're like you're just i want to yeah. do that I want to oh, have fun yeah. with my friends I think like that's that. probably like if i had to take away like the one thing that when I always think about like, why did I want to do this? Or like, what was I interested in doing when I grew up? All I remember thinking is I want to do that. So it would be like, I'd go to a concert and mm -hmm. I'd like, mm -hmm. I'd look at the person and be like, I want to do that. And then I would see a movie and I was like, I want to do that. Like that was really, yeah. that's really like the only thing I can connect to. Like, I just wanted to be like, I want to yeah. pretend to be those people was kind of how yeah. I felt. So same, same here. And I was, I, I wanted to do it when I was nine. I was too shy and had such a uh, um, kind of a strange childhood, but a lot of people do a little rough and David as well. So I never pursued it until later, but it was always a secret kind of desire to yeah. do that. Well, what yeah. about having fun? Forget, I know we got to wrap it up, but bridesmaids is you couldn't look at more people having fun in a movie. It, whatever, it just that's seems my, like that's you're, lightning in a bottle. You're all as friends, as a, lightning as in a bottle. That, that was movie, fun. yeah, you're, unbelievable. You're 100%, right, that was the like that was the joy of making that. And like, I think at a certain point, I remember us talking about it, saying like, I don't know if anyone's going to see this movie or like it, but I'm so <laughs> glad we made it. Like, we had oh, so much fun making it. Off and the that charts. is also like the essence of people that know each other well. You get to so you get yeah. to experience that chemistry, and then. 
you're all make trying to make each other laugh. Mm. You know, yeah, that just was unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that's one of those movies that just just uh, made its mark. Well, well, Lou, uh, I got to ask I you two things about loot, Maya, before I let you go. You, uh, wow, you this is so. Pro- I don't know professional Spade. I'm really. I know this. Spade is kind of today. He is sort of the boss man. He is kind of taking. I, I, feel I, like I, you I got get a to haircut sit back for this podcast. <laughs> he I like did, my it, hair right now. It's I the best too. his hair's looked. At, and, uh, last night we had dinner, and his hair looked amazing. And he was a little cocky about it. It still <laughs> looks good. N- next day hair yeah. is looking it's good. It's very slept on, like. Mm. Yeah, bed bed head. Look at oh, I got a little PTA I... beard coming in my. You see that with the gray? Yeah, mine is too. Look at that. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is good. And when you do loot, okay, real quick, Dana, I'm going to ask you this because I wrote down her cast is. We we talked a little bit about it at the beginning. I didn't give too much away. I just was watching okay. clips, which of course she's. You did you always, did a little homework? Oh. Always funny to watch her in anything, but I like to see you really rich in it. Um, but you have. Ron Funches and Nat Faxon are the only ones I know in it, but that I know personally. Both great. Both, if they're in there, they're going to score. So if you get to play off them, it's already. Yeah, Nat, Nat and I were in the Groundlings together a oh, mere okay. 20 plus mm. years ago. So that's the that's the joy right there. Yeah. I just fell in love with Ron Funches He's and wanted sweetheart. to know him i love him he has so his own different. own lane he's got something yeah very he's got a, unique he's got a very interesting thing he does yeah, and, uh, so we used to have gentle lights out. and funny yeah always cool. quietly he's scoring every time always you go to quietly him. scoring and it's just oh, it's such a joy to watch it's like hanging out with like a the personality of like a human mochi <laughs> <laughs> I like that description. <laughs> so. Well, Lute should be on now. It's a written by, was it the Parks and Recs people that put it together? Alan Yang and Matt Hubbard. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, it's, that's sort of a vibe that, that rolls through it? Sort of a vibe, Spade. It's like, um, you know, if you're like hanging out with cool mm-hmm. people and like mm-hmm. drinking brews and yeah. I don't know, massaging each other's shoulders. Yep. It's kind of like that. That's it. <laughs> that's where I like to be. That's what I'm doing. That's Come the on. show, though. That's the whole show. We just That's hang out and massage each other's shoulders. It's pretty well, cool. Loot is a cool name because I say loot because I talk about money all the time. So I say loot a lot and I it rap. Is very, it is very fun pretending to be rich. I do I, I do think that that's the lure of what um, was exciting about the show. Yeah, that, that, that byline makes me intrigued. Yeah. Just anyone becoming a billionaire. Like, what? Yeah, well, what would you it be instantly like? are like, what What can't I do? Like, mm-hmm. the yeah. possibilities are endless, but then instantly fall into like social responsibility. Like, uh oh, should I should I save the world? But yeah. one thing about our billionaires is they seem to really, really enjoy it. Like they always say they're going to give it all away, but then their stock goes up. So we, <laughs> you know, I gave I away know thirty. If they can yeah, I don't know if they can and, give it all away. It, it, and then they want to multiply live so fast. They just. They give away. Well, I don't think back. they they can. Yeah. You know, Warren Buffett says he's gonna give away ninety nine percent, but then there's like a billion left. For the kids. <laughs> I know, just laying. I'm around. not gonna spoil them. I'm only leaving one percent. It's like I mean, I guess it's not, you can have like a nice place to live and all that, and while you're saving the world, right? You can get some islands and. Yeah, Den- Dennis Miller says it. Carnfee, it all comes down to planes and paintings, okay? That's the final <laughs> frontier. You want that Basquiat for about 200 mil? You got two G5s rotating, going around the world. But yeah, that is the, the chariot of all. To have a G6 that can travel anywhere, it just yeah. waits for you. That's the most decadent, yeah. uh, cool thing you could you could have, I'm working I on think, it. as a toy. My, my working, working on it, it right? Spade? Trying, yeah, trying. Spades work. Spades. I feel like I should do Garth for a second because of your. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Uh, we'll end with this. Ma- Maya sure has been a good guest. She really knows how to say cool things. Oh God! Oh my yeah. God! I have a total boner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I'm full on excited right now. I love it. <laughs> All I right. feel funny like when I used to climb the rope in gym class. Oh, damn it. Swing indeed. Sh- swing, 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 swing. Well, Maya, I mean, know you have a hard Thank out. You, Maya. Kept you. I have a hard it's out not sound. because of not because of you guys, because I gotta go do Fallon. It's Jimmy's fault. Well, Jimmy. you know what? I'm I'm doing D- Jim Downey wrote that. 
I'm on my way to Santa Monica after this. His documentary for oh, yeah. Peacock. Yeah, yeah, I did that when I, when I was here last time. I'm doing that. That's very today. exciting and probably a, a a rich piece of history that yes. um, will be worth worth uh, being a part of. It, it's nice when someone gets their due. That Jim was this one of the overarching p- people of the history of the show. Can you do the a little Jim Downey for me? Oh, that's did? tough. You know something, something really funny about you know. I don't know. He always stares at the scene. It just feels a little precious. It's something. There's a, All I I'm get is a uh, Maya. It's the downer. <laughs> is that what he says? Yeah. It's I once called him, and I'm gonna say without exaggeration, he talked for three hours straight. Only once in a while, going, "Am I talking too much?" <laughs> and it was it was absolutely fascinating. We went over global history, U.S. history. He just went everywhere. And I've never met an intellect. He goes to the Yale Library and just gets big books and reads them. He's like this <laughs> brainiac extraordinary. What a uh, anyway. rich life we've lived that we've crossed paths with some of these people yeah. and minds. And um, I'm also yes. I'm also including both of you it's pretty wild it's like it's pretty wild to have had a job that the job that we all have in common um provided Mm -hmm. us with this like weekly changing thing so we really did like sometimes i'll kind of think like wow i did meet a lot of people in my 20s like i met people i I worked with them for a week you know and you forget i see people they go i hosted snl when you were there i go oh that's right like even Michael Jordan, I remember I did a whole week with him, ended a sketch with them, and I'm like, they go, have you ever met Michael Jordan? I go, I don't think so. And they go, no, you did. You did You did the whole show with them. I go, well, because it's sort of just work, and you just try to stay out of their face, and you just try to keep everything respectful, and you forget. Yeah, I would like, always get kind of nervous when the host was, the host in the early days was down in the offices, and they'd go, would you like to go? Um, <laughs> yeah. Charlton Heston would like to say hello yeah. to you. And then you're walking down there and you open the door and then there's Charlton Heston or, you know, or Michael Jordan. Yeah. It's just like, uh, always, hello. Always nervous. Never yeah. not yeah. nervous about yeah. that. To me, yeah. that was no. never like, I got, it. let me handle this. Let me handle it. It's Hi. Daniel Day Lewis. Hi, yeah, Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, oh, what's Jesus. up? But okay. you're right. That's why this What's pod- up, Jesus Christ? Hey. Jesus. <laughs> When did he host? <laughs> in um, 97. Oh, and our musical guest is Madonna. I feel like it'll be a sort of a good mix. <laughs> with with Jesus? It's, it's that yeah. thing. It would be really nice if it was like a really good show. Uh, Dana, you know, I'm not kidding. If it's just like once a year that you want to <laughs> leave me voice messages. I'll, yeah, I'll get your information. And I will occasionally leave you a message from Lauren. I mean, I, I, will, say, Lauren. I will say... For what for when we wrote for the fortieth, for the mm-hmm. um you know um when Martin Short and I did the musical thing. For oh yeah, oh, right, right, right. I wrote chop and we wrote chop and broccoli for you because yes. that made us so happy and that was such a big part of our lives of like me and Emily Spivey were like oh my god do you think Dana would say yes and then we got to like talk to you about it and you're you were you're more like us. I never, mm-hmm. I never assume people remember me. I never mm-hmm. impose. I'm always like, yeah. okay, yeah. like a, like a, right. like on the back foot. Cause I don't, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't like that over familiarity. And you were like, is this okay? Do you want this in here? Like, Jesus, like that honestly was the component to like, that was like the key ingredient to like bringing it all together. And I feel like that moment in my life where the like younger me was like in mm-hmm. love with you and watching you be a genius on the show and quoting you in my house and in my life and then getting to Jeez, pay respect so nice. to that. And then notice I don't say these things to spade ever. Mm-hmm. So it's true. Well, yeah. Maya, could I just say because of that and thank you for putting it in there during the commercial break, Paul McCartney was sitting in the in the stand, so I did this little teeny thing from Revolver. Your day breaks, your mind aches, and I'm not a big piano player, but I was able to play that. And Paul stood up, did his six shooters. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. So that was like our connection. And then we did Wayne's World at the end of the show, and we're doing the good nights. And suddenly, there's someone massaging me. No. And I look no. up, and it's Paul. He's good, you know. So all of us to sum up. When you're on Saturday Night Live experientially, who you meet, the pressure, 8H, Lauren Michaels, it's a time in your life when you're having success or not, everything about it and the the 
the relationships you make that if you ran into somebody, you couldn't see him for 10 years, like with David and I, I didn't yeah. see him a lot for many years, suddenly we're best friends in like three seconds. Mm. So that's why this podcast is fun because it's yeah. such a seminal True. part of all of our lives. It's a I, linchpin. I, I'll, I'll come back um, if you want to do like a four hour session next time. We, love we would it. love to have it. Like, that was met with like a resounding silence. No, you have I, so well, many I was, No one's ever said about. that to us. No, everyone goes, everyone at the end of the years go, okay, I did this. I did you a favor. I will never do this again. That's usually the sign off. You're the first to say. <laughs> no, Jimmy was great yesterday. Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy yeah, he Fallon. Just, yeah, he's he was, so fucking funny. So we, we had we a great a time and uh, we love you, Maya. I always joke with you, but I love you to death because you're, so great yeah. and we're at, at, i'm at an age where i just tell everyone i love them so we're gonna bring dana you. into the fold and then you can slowly uh phase me out and bring in dana um i've been waiting for so long to do that thank you <laughs> great okay uh, bye I honey love you guys thank Have you fun. so much love you bye <laughs> Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? We want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. Okay, we're going to read a fan question from Aaron Andraco. Andriaco. <laughs> Andriaco. Ay, Andriaco. ay, ay. Aaron Andriaco. Ay. Yeah. Hey guys, 43-year-old lifelong SNL fan, love the podcast. I'm always amazed how much original material is generated only in a week. Oh, at the show. Curious how many weeks it took to write the 40th special. Ooh, that's a good question. That was very tricky. I think that was Steve Higgins was in charge of that. I would say like everything else on SNL, it's it's devoted to ADD theater. Why do it now when you can do it later? And then this compression mentally starts this pressure and finally you have to work on it. I think we probably did the 40th in the same amount we did, even though it was like a four regular hour week. special yeah. as a regular week. There was no really rehearsal on the soundstage. I mean, Mike and I were just back in a room going, Joe, what? you know, I could do that too. <laughs> just this yeah, little you're room. left to your own devices. Yeah, kind of. and we we're just practicing ourselves. So that was fly by the seat of your pants 40th that turned out amazing, but it was one of those shows that was iffy, right? What did it you was, do on the 40th? I didn't, I wasn't in anything and I go, yeah, we'll just come. And then uh, I said, they oh, put you in maybe something. one, uh, maybe one sketch when they're leaving, I'll just stand there and say, bye-bye. And they goes, yeah. So at the end of the Californians, he goes, just say, bye-bye, bye-bye. And because I was like, I'll take anything. <laughs> Everyone was being cool because I go, that'd be funny because it's something I, I did. The four hundred five to the <laughs> to Stone yeah, Canyon it's Drive. Yeah, California funny. It's California, sorry. And you know, everyone was game for that. Like I just did like the end of a sketch, and then Steve Martin puts the whole get up on for King Tut to sing two lines to be a part of some other bigger sketch. It was just, it was just fun. It was more fun the fortieth because everywhere you turned, it was someone you knew or someone famous, and they were all just. It was more of a party. People were drinking. It was less of a show. It's like the, the, it was a wax museum when you looked at the in the stands. It was everybody was famous. So you're playing to all famous people, mm. which normally might not be the best audience. But Mike and I went on at the very end, like almost at midnight. We waited like for eight hours. Mm. And I said, either we're, we should be really flattered <laughs> that they, oh, we'll put them on at the very end or really yeah. angry. But I said, let's go fuck them up, man. So the rest is history. Yeah. That's it. Uh, say, what is his name? Oh, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron, for writing that in. That was our shortest answer ever, to be honest. Thank you, Aaron. And the Draco. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 